Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the extensor muscles. Let's get started. We learn anatomy with our body posed in the anatomical position, which is standing upright with arms out and palms facing up. This keeps the origins, insertions, and movements consistent. This is especially important when learning the anatomy of the lower arm because they can rotate into complex positions. Keep in mind this is different than when we stand at rest where the palms face the inside of our body. Keep this anatomical position in mind when we discuss the placement of our arm muscles. Now let's get to the anatomy. The extensors are a group of muscles on the back of our lower arm. All of the extensor muscles originate right next to each other on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. We have an extensor muscle called the extensor carpi radialis brevis. It inserts into the base of the metacarpal bone of the middle finger. The name gives us its location and function. It's an extensor that inserts into the carpal bones on the side of the radius. It is also called brevis because there will be a longer version we will discuss in another lecture. We can think of the radial side as the thumb side. The extensor carpi ulnaris originates at the lateral epicondyle and inserts into the base of the metacarpal of our pinky. Its name also helps us understand the muscle. It's an extensor muscle inserting into the carpal bones on the side of the ulna. We can think of the ulnar side as the pinky side. There is a muscle between these two called the extensor digitorum. It originates at the lateral epicondyle and inserts into the last section of each digit or finger, excluding the thumb. The name of this muscle tells us it is an extensor of the digits or fingers. The extensor digitorum minimi is a thin muscle inserting only into the pinky. It peaks out between the extensor digitorum and extensor carpi ulnaris. Its name minimi means small, and it's a smaller extensor that only moves the pinky. Despite its small size, it will occasionally be seen on the surface. This is a complex group, but focus on the names to help you memorize their order. There is an extensor on the radial or thumb side, an extensor on the ulnar or pinky side, a larger extensor in the middle moving the digits or fingers, and a smaller extensor of the pinky under the larger extensor of the digits. We also need to remember that the extensors come from the outside of the arm and curve around to the back of the hand. Remembering their origins and insertions in the anatomical position will help us track the muscles when the lower arm moves. Each of the extensors performs a different action on the wrist and fingers. Because the extensor carpi radialis brevis anchors to the humerus and acts on the base of the hand, if it contracts, it will pivot the wrist laterally or to the outside of the body. The extensor carpi ulnaris anchors to the humerus and acts on the inside of the wrist. If it contracts, it will pivot the wrist medially or to the inside of the body. The extensor digitorum and digitorum minimi anchor to the humerus and act on the fingers. If the hand is closed and the two muscles contract, they will extend the fingers or open the hand. Even though the extensor digitorum also inserts into the pinky, it is the extensor digitorum minimi that is the main extensor of that little finger. Because the group anchors to the humerus, and acts on both sides of the wrist and fingers, if they contract together, they will extend the whole hand at the wrist, pulling it back. Now let's find the extensor muscles from the surface. The lower arm can be a challenge to understand with so many complex muscles. In order to analyze the muscles, we need to find some landmarks to orient the arm. This is the olecranon process of the ulna, or our elbow. This point on the base of the wrist is the distal or far end of the ulna. If we draw a line to connect these two points, 
we can identify the whole ulna. The shadow along this edge is called the ulnar furrow, a landmark that shows the division between the extensor muscles and the flexor muscles. Drawing a perpendicular line through the elbow will help us find the medial and lateral epicondyles to insert the extensor muscles. From the lateral epicondyle and bordering the ulnar furrow, we can see a shadow here indicating the mass of the extensor carpi ulnaris. This muscle appears as if it ends right at the distal end of the ulna, but the tendon does go past to insert into the base of the pinky metacarpal. Remember this muscle will always be on the side of the ulna or pinky. Just to the inside of this, we can see the highlight and shadow, indicating the extensor digitorum minimi and its tendon going down to the pinky. This deeper shadow here shows the larger mass of the extensor digitorum moving down to the middle of the wrist where the tendon fans out going to the back of each finger. The larger mass above this is another group of muscles called the supinators. This group spirals over the extensors, partially covering up the origin of this muscle, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, where we can see a hint of its tendon going to the metacarpal of the middle finger. Remember this muscle will always be on the side of the radius or thumb. Here are the names of this complex group. Remember all of these points when drawing the extensors. Analyze the anatomy on the surface of your reference and draw from observation and memory to help you learn. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.